Okay, so thank you everyone. So in the next uh, 20 minutes, I'm going uh, to convince you that, that, that uh, differences in this location content uh, drive uh, rectalization in, in during annealing in, in the form of magnesium alloys. So our motivation as an earth scientist is uh, twofold. First, static rectalization is a very common process in, in nature. And, and second, uh, static rectalization share <coughs> a lot of features with dynamic rectalization, which is, a, with, is also a, a major process in, in nature. So <coughs> apparently, uh, uh, static rectalization is, 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 is a really simple process. And there is a huge amount of experimental evidence behind this, but uh, yet the basic fixes of nucleation and grain border migration uh, are not completely understood. And this is mainly beca uh, because uh, a large number of microstructural variables uh, uh, affect uh, rock stabilization, and also because there are some interdependencies between them that makes it difficult to separate uh, their effect. So uh, there is also uh, ample evidence uh, about recrystallization uh, uh, behaves in a very different manner in, in high and low deformed aggregates. And here we are going to focus in, in high deformed aggregates. So we think that the critical need to go further in this topic is to de design experiments that isolate key variables and, and perform, perform local scale dynamic in situ uh, observations. So the driving factors of recrystallization, the most obvious one is, is of course, uh, temperature, and, and is the most student one, two, because that. Uh, uh, this driving factor was already explored uh, in previous studies using the same approach, used uh, here, this is uh, quasi in situ EBSD. Uh, so the, the next, uh, driving factor that comes into mind are differences in the stored dislocation energies and differences in the stored interface energies. And, and, and both, uh, both driving factors uh, compete against, is, uh, against each other. And there are also other factors that can have a major influence in, in rectalization by enhancing it or slowing it down uh, such as impurity or solid drugs, uh, the presence of secondary particles and pores, and so on. Our goal with this study is to understand how uh, the storage dislocations and the interface energy affect recrystallization in our, in our deformed <coughs> aggregates. And for this, we, we, we design uh, an, uh, an experiment that meets uh, the following uh, requisites. Uh, first, uh, we start with the same material, but with different starting microstructure as this location content. We apply the same annealing temperature and time step for all the samples. Uh, in principle, there are, no n there are no difference across specimens on the fraction of solute, uh, solutes or secondary phases. And we track the volume microstructure and texture uh, using a quasi in situ FSD approach. So the starting material is ICTA 31 B alloy. Uh, this pipette uh, that you can see here, and uh, this material was already uh, deformed and annealing and annealed, and uh, so that uh, the material have a very strong basal texture and very low dislocation content. And, uh, and a small grain size. The apparent grain size is of about five uh, micron. So then uh, we deformed this parallel pipette in a channel dye compression rate at different uh, temperatures, 250 or 300, and different strain rates, uh, 10 to the minus one and 10 to the minus two. Uh, the disposition of the texture, uh, m most of the C axis of the, of the of the magnesium crystals uh, align uh, parallel to the compression direction, except in, in that sample that is <coughs> aligned parallel to the transverse direction, and this one that is parallel to the extension direction. And with these different combinations, uh, we obtain 
uh, different strain stress curves that go from 80 megapascal up to 160 megapascal. Uh, we limited the, the shortening uh, to around 12% just to prevent uh, too much dynamic rock stabilization in the original samples but two of them uh, go up to 25% and, and there is a, a, a correlation, more or less linear correlation between <coughs> the time at maximum stress and the average, ke the kernel average misorientation of the samples. So after that, we, we put these cut samples in the middle, I uh, put it in, in this in-house ceramic heating stage that go inside the EVSD camera. Uh, and uh, we, we track the temperature at the bottom of the sample, at the top, with thermocouples, and we apply four to six, six uh, thermal cy cycles, and, and uh, we measure, take some EBSD maps in between, and the annealing temperature was set to 300 degrees Celsius degrees. So this is a, a, a summary of all the EBSD post-data acquisition protocol we apply, and we want to, uh, I, I want to highlight that we use kernel or local average misorientation maps to, difference, to differentiate between the substructure uh, domain and the recrystallized domain that is mostly substructure free, here in blue. Uh, we use the same proxy to, to, dis to segmentate the recrystallized grains and, and we also uh, perform a segmentation of the different uh, uh, grain boundaries so that we can estimate the recrystallization from land per unit area, the grain impigment ratios, and other, uh, fact and other factors. Uh, we also set a new, a new proxy parameter that, uh, that we call it uh, kappa, that, that, uh, that is a measure of the local average misorientation gradient across the grain boundary. And we can calculate this along uh, whatever boundary, whatever grain boundary you consider. And, and we did this because we, we want to test the influence of the local dislocation density uh, gradients in the mobility of the recrystallization front. Okay. So we are going to, uh, now th that's the result. So this is how it looks like the, uh, the, the sequences, the sequence, the sequence of annealing for the different samples. Uh, in the rows are the different samples and the, the columns are similar time steps. In blue is the recrystallized, the recrystallized fraction. So uh, three features uh, stand out in this, in this plot. Uh, the first one is that uh, all the samples have, have uh, uh, recrystallized fraction uh, paths over time that are very distinctive. Uh, the second feature is that at least half of the samples uh, reach in a, 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 a plateau, uh, which means that the, the recrystallization process is exhausted before, before complexion. And the third feature is that there is a, a, a strong correlation between the initial of the perennialed average, kernel, uh, average misorientation of the samples and the uh, attained recrystallized, recrystallized fraction at some specific time. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay. Well, in this case, it's not working, but well, it's just to to comment that this this uh, this strong correlation. Uh, 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 we, uh, uh, is weaker over time because of this, uh, mainly because of this sample here, the, the one in orange, and uh, 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 because, uh, uh, as you can see, this, this this path here blocks the trend. So at some point, at some point, this 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 sample uh, uh, attain a highly recrystallized fraction compared to counterparts that have initial. Uh, high, high initial uh, CAM values. That's it. So this is a movie that is not working, but okay. I think okay. So 
So this is one of the this is the sequence of one of the samples. So you can see that the recrystallization proceed proceeds by nucleation of and growth of of, of new dislocation free grains. And, and uh, one thing <coughs> one one feature that stands out is that some of the grains uh, show very regular uh, grain boundaries. And if you track the grain boundary regularity individually over time, you can see that some of the grains increase their, their irregularity over time or, or maintain it uh, as long as the grains growth surrounded by the substructure domain. If the, if the, if the <coughs> grain impeachment is, is high, uh, this does this does not occur. Have to move this manually. Okay. This is the same sequence, but this time the, the different colors indicate the, the average misorientation of every grain, so that the, the, the blue ones are the grains that have low dislocation content or low average misorientation. And you can see that the, that grains are the ones that tend to persist over time. And also, when the recrystallization from meet some of these grains, Normally, uh, the green boundary stayed put or progressed very slowly compared to other parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. This video. The last video. Right. So this is still the same sequence, but this time only showing the, the green boundaries. The orange one are the recrystallization front. The green ones are the are the boundaries that put in contact the interfaces that put in contact the recrystallized material, and the blue ones that put in contact the structure material. Mm -hmm. And the f the most astonishing feature is the that the recrystallization front uh, uh, remains very regular over time, uh, uh, while if you focus on the on the interfaces that put in contact the 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 rock crystallized material is appear very smooth, straight, and even uh, uh, showing some uh, triple joints at 120 degrees. So, okay, back to normal. Uh, okay, this is a local scale map, and this is just to show that the rock crystallization front uh, when. Uh, uh, when it's in contact with with uh, areas with high uh, dislocation density, it tends to 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 show uh, shapes uh, convex shapes towards the towards this zone, and it's the opposite when, when the when the areas uh, have low dislocation content or, or low uh, uh, average misorientation. So about recrystallization kinetics. So. Uh, so this are a plot. Uh, this is a plot with uh, recrystallization fraction against uh, annealing uh, lower limit time with uh, logistic growth curves fit. So this uh, logistic uh, growth curve uh, uh, fit in, in, in general fits very nice and, and provide uh, uh, provide good estimation of the observations. Uh, setting Starting from those two that that, is that are indicated with dash, dashes line, that that uh, that in this case the the k the k value that control the shape of the curve uh, do not provide uh, uh, provide high high errors. So we discard this one, and uh, this uh, this curve allows us to estimate the the maximum recrystallized fraction expected for for the samples that did not stagnate in the time frame of the experiment. And also allow us to uh, estimate the, the recrystallization rate by, de by deriving this, this, this equation here. So uh, moving, on, moving along, okay, so this is a plot of recrystallized fraction against the recrystallization from length per unit area. And the thing that I want to highlight here is that the samples that, that, uh, that have high uh, average uh, uh, misorientation values initially uh, develop for the same for the same recrystallized fraction develop larger longer uh, recrystallization front length per unit area, which uh, which is 
due to two causes. First, because the nucleation rate is higher in these samples, and second, because the REC stratification front is more irregular. Uh, we also use this REC stabilization front length per unit area to normalize the, the REC stabilization rate estimate so that we, we were able to estimate the, the average speed of the REC stabilization front. And, and we plot this average speed of the REC stabilization front against the Kappa proxy that we are testing, and we find that there is a strong uh, correlates co uh, co that, that correlate strongly uh, nearly li uh, in a linear manner so that uh, the higher the kappa the higher the the, the speed of the recrystallization front but but there are some funny features here because the 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 paths uh, of the different uh, of the different samples do not converge uh, meaning that, that for a similar kappa value, we obtain different uh, recrystallization uh, front speeds, which is, uh, uh, which is strange. Uh, um, and, and also, if you can see th this path that go up to, to zero when, when the, uh, to the speed equals zero when the, when the recrystallization stagnates, stagnates uh, south. Uh, so uh, for these samples here, uh, they stagnate uh, around 1.0 uh, capable, but but if you project these 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 paths here, uh, it will be at, at 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 lower values. So overall, uh, this is an indication that that uh, an other factor other other than the than the that the local average orientation is controlling also the stagnation of the sample. Okay, and um, uh, regarding the green side growth, we also fitted uh, some green, gro green growth curves, and uh, uh, most of the curves appear with these flap tops uh, and provide very, very high uh, green growth exponents between 7 and 18. Uh, uh, just uh, to say that previous studies that, that, that worked with uh, green growth kinetics in this in this very same material provide values between three and five mostly so this is very high values the only that holds is is this one that is the the orange one and another surprise is that the that the constant k here uh, that is supposed to be controlled by annealing temperature uh, provide very different values and the annealing temperature is the same for all the for all the so to conclude, uh, we, fo uh, we found uh, multiple, multiple evidence of fabric stabilization, mainly driven by differences in dislocation energy. So these, evidence, uh, these evidences are a strong correlation between the CAM and Kappa proxies and the recrystallization kinetics. The recrystallization front uh, tend to move towards the areas with high dislocation content and grain with low CAM values tend to persist. Also, uh, there is no curvature redu reduction in the recrystallization front, even in the samples that stagnate. Uh, uh, we do not observe, uh, we did not observe phase parallel interface movement in the experiments. Uh, 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 neither we find uh, misorientation controls, and the and the only uh, crystallographic control what we found is that twinning a cell zone effect. Uh, on the tiny recrystallization fraction and explain some of the off trends we observe. Um, finally, dislocation energy uh, reduction alone cannot fully explain the stagnation, and we 